them. If anybody touches you from now, you're going to get pregnant. Not touch. So there were a lot of things that a lady has to deal with in this life. <laughs> I mean, the list is endless. Interestingly, the period time happens to make it to that list. And what exactly is most dreaded about the period time? The chiefest of all of them is the period pain. There are so many things that people dread about the period time. Okay, but you see that period pain is a major one. And interestingly, for centuries now, you know, the pain has become kind of normalized in the society. And that's why a lot of people are no longer seeking out medical care or expertise. You feel like, oh, your mom had it before you were born. You have an elder sister, an older sibling somebody somebody who is related to you who used to have it or is still having it so you feel like it's normal for you to continue to have pain and you know interestingly that so many people don't even do anything about that pain they feel like you just have to have it pain is not normal okay pain is not normal In my own house it was looking like it was normal so the most of the most is that you just go to one auntie or one uncle that sells one chemist around your house and you just tell them, oh, I'm having period cramps and this, 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 and that. You know, but this is a major issue that is affecting women. A major factor that interferes with our daily activities. I mean, activities of our daily living, like your work, your school, your social and um, athletic events, you know. And the list is endless. So I think it's something we really need to talk about. We need to pay attention to. I see people who say that knowledge is waste like there is no sense of you going to school see uh, i didn't know the harm i did to myself until i went to school like until i was in nursing school i found that i wouldn't have to go through the hurdles that i eventually had to go through and i know some people are still going through the same hurdle today and that's why i want to make this issues clarified the most important thing is that you need to even be sure what kind of pain are you having that is why professionals already came up with a medical term or a medical name for this pain and that is called dysmenorrhea if you hear me say dysmenorrhea i'm simply saying menstrual pain i'm simply saying period cramps period pain okay that's exactly what i'm referring to that's just the medical term for the menstrual pain okay so this pain usually starts after puberty and usually might not stop okay i learned when i was younger i learned that so i don't know i learned that when people start having babies you're supposed to stop like the pain is supposed to stop but for some people it doesn't still stop they've had all the babies they're supposed to have or the plan to have and yet they still have this pain and plan to have so you might be wondering how exactly do i even know the type of dysmenorrhea that i have it's the pain is supposed to be categorized so you can get the best form of treatment or uh, management or nothing support that you need okay so we have two types of dysmenorrhea we have the primary dysmenorrhea and the secondary dysmenorrhea well the symptoms of the primary dysmenorrhea just include them um, the pain is supposed to be categorized so you can get the best form of treatment or a lower abdominal or pelvic pain. Okay, the typical symptom is just um, a lower abdominal or pelvic pain that usually starts um, just before or during the menses. Okay, basically the primary is usually due to um, normal prostaglandin or vasopressin release. You know, see. Prostaglandin and vasopressin are responsible for triggering contraction, I mean uterine contraction. So what you are actually having during those periods is the crampy pain you feel during your menstrual period. I don't know if that's clear enough. Usually that pain, don't forget, that, that lower abdominal or pelvic pain may or may not radiate to your back, your lower back or to your thigh. It may and it may not. So if you have those typical symptoms, you probably have a primary dysmenorrhea. So you see that it's just as simple and as basic as that. Okay, but the second dys dysmenorrhea is usually due to a, an underlying pathology. What I mean by pathology is like there is a disease condition somewhere that is probably causing the trigger. Okay, probably you have a right-sided pain. Okay, you have um, um the pain. The onset of the pain doesn't necessarily leave after the bleeding. Maybe it continues for some days more. Okay, and maybe there are other associated symptoms. You are not just having that pain alone. There are many other things that you're manifesting at the, at the time. You probably need 
to be properly diagnosed and checked okay your health care provider might actually have to um, rule out pregnancy alongside or infection okay and um, if in addition to that if you're sexually active your health care provider might have to perform a bimanual pelvic examination just to be sure okay assess you to be sure that there is nothing more okay but if they opt out like if they do not do any of those things okay just relax they it's not a problem it doesn't mean that they are wrong because this is something they can diagnose through um clinical acumen i hope you get what i'm saying the secondary dysmenorrhea or secondary period pain is usually caused um, is usually caused by an underlying pathology like I said so the evaluation or the diagnosis of this is usually a detailed kind of diagnosis because it entails treating the underlying cause if they don't find the root cause of the problem they might probably not be able to give you the best treatment okay but usually the best treatment approach for the secondary um, this menorrhea is hysterectomy and hysterectomy is simply the removal the surgical removal of the uterus okay so if they have tried every don't i don't get me wrong i don't mean the moment you come and they find out that it's secondary they just have to take out your uterus no hell no okay so they have to first of all do a kind of um narrowing down of to be sure the detailed assessment or diagnosis will help them find what exactly is responsible and give you the probable the, the possible treatment the best possible treatment that you can get but if after everything has been done usually the best approach is to take out the uterus okay that if there are no other options left don't get me wrong so endometriosis and adenomyosis happen to contribute to a major part or a major factor for secondary dysmenorrhea there are significantly other factors or other things that could cause or that could be responsible for the trigger of the secondary dysmenorrhea and that includes fibroids uh, pelvic pain syndrome pelvic inflammatory disease i mean the chronic pelvic pain syndrome okay don't get me wrong the pelvic inflammatory diseases and um, interstitial cystitis is another one okay so i hope we are still together so if secondary dysmenorrhea is suspected or is diagnosed okay a comprehensive underline the word comprehensive management by a qualified gynecologist is recommended okay because that underlying factor that like that underlying trigger or cause needs to be properly solved for that pain to go away. because pain is actually it's not something you can just treat it's a very complex pattern if you understand the physiology of pain you know that it's not something you can you know you can't just take away pain like that you have to deal with the root cause okay so now let's talk about the most interesting part the conservative management okay if you don't want to um go through all the hurdles you don't so the first conservative way to address painful menses or painful period is heat therapy honestly i cannot overemphasize i cannot underemphasize sorry this particular point see that heat therapy or the use of heat part is very 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 essential it's not that difficult if you don't have a hot water bottle you can improvise what you have i mean if you have um, a metal flux like a metal um, hot water bottle flax at home just make sure you boil enough hot water okay fill it up lock it up properly then wrap it around with a part like um not i don't mean a thick part something light okay but make sure that it is properly locked because you don't need to, the last thing you want to add to your paint is hot water spill okay so after wrapping just wrapping maybe just one round or two fold let me say one fold or two fold okay make it light as light as possible then put it just put it beneath like your pelvic region just put it just underneath just put it under your abdomen like under your abdomen lift it. if you have food lift that food and put it there and it's a change from time to time okay you know how much you can endure the, the heat nobody says you should leave it there so you get burnt no don't don't burn yourself with water okay because that heat kind of dilates blood vessels and makes it easy for the clot or the blood to flow quickly and come out so it will give you a relief okay so the second one is you want to avoid the consumption of um gas producing food including beans and dairy products okay any gas forming food for that time you want to stay away from it okay and um you know um it's also advisable sometimes you avoid um the consumption of sugar like sugar-containing 
foods like that are highly super saturated with sugar okay the reason is because sugar is a precursor for prostaglandin okay don't forget when we talked about primary dysmenorrhea we said that the substances that are usually released are prostaglandin and vasopressin okay because it's sugar helps to form prostaglandin okay if you starve yourself from sugar you're helping yourself yeah like you're doing yourself a lot of good okay so that's the second one so the third one is exercise especially light cardio exercise okay it can help to reduce bloating okay it can reduce bloating and also cause the release of endorphins okay so if you do that you are going to get relieved it's going to help you get relief from um menstrual pain okay another one is um nutritional supplementation okay the consumption of um, omega-3 fatty acids uh, magnesium and um vitamin b1 supplementation is going to really help you they are very good they are going to help your system generally okay aid your recovery give you the nutrient that you need at the time help you not to be worked like um help you not to be overly worked out or worked up okay and um helps to replenish what you are losing generally what and research says that massage is also very good it generally helps you to feel refreshed okay helps you to feel much better just re-energizing that's what research says that like releases when another conservative method is the use of herbs though there is no herb i'm recommending personally okay another conservative method is the use of herbs though there is no herb i'm recommending personally okay another conservative method is the use of herbs though there is no herb i'm recommending personally okay but some people have found that herbs are very good so it but you need to be sure the herb that you're using what it contains okay how and how the effects okay so this is not something i'm going to personally recommend and finally i'm going to talk about non-steroidal non-steroidal anti-inflammatory um, medications hey you see people you need to really understand this one very if you know that you have also please and please NSAIDs are not for you what I mean by NSAID, you see all those drugs that be between ibu, ibuprofen, uh, ibucap, um, diclofenac, all those medications. Anytime that you go to the hospital or you, you're seeing someone who is giving you medication, make sure or be sure to emphasize it to them that you have ulcer so they don't give you those kind of medications because it will further irritate your, gas, your gastric lining and that is causing a lot of harm. Okay, You are irritating the ulcer that you already have. So you, that's the last medication you want to use. Paracetamol is a very good one and um, it's going to give you relief. But I know some people, they, they'll tell you their own pain has a um, strong head that they want to knock it out. Don't take double dose of an analgesic or anti-inflammatory because you have no, no, it's a no. Rather use palliative method, rest more, exercise more, eat good food at the time, eat plenty of fruit and vegetables, drink a lot of water. All of these things are going to help you. Okay, so that's the tip the conservative tip i have but if you have not yet subscribed to my youtube channel please do not hesitate be sure to hit the notification bell so that each time i post a new video you're going to be notified okay like comment share this video as well so there's some other factors let me go back to the video there's some other things that i wish that every mom can tell their teen daughters before the first menstrual period i mean menarche Menarche is called by medical terms, by medical term is referred to as menarche, okay? But a lot of women do not prepare their daughters. There is no preparation. There are so many things that if we had known today, you know, it would have saved a lot of us. I mean, a lot of people out there, not just me, okay, from so many medical steps, okay? And that's why I'm emphasizing this part. It's very, really important. Every mother who has a teen girl needs to educate them properly before men are king, okay? The first one is that the time you have it does, or the age that you have it doesn't signal you being fast. It doesn't mean that, oh, you, 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 you became full blown or you were blown into puberty too early. No, you add it or your body came or it came when your body was ready and that's fine. That is really fine, okay? Number two is that you need to also educate your daughter that it could be tracked, okay? If it is tracked, it's going to save you a lot of embarrassment. There are many times, like when I was in secondary school, because you're not prepared and you don't know that there's something called tracking, you don't know that there's a date that can come, you get stained. 
See that embarrassing? Everybody start giving you their clothes, their cardigan, or their jacket to tie your waist and something so that people don't know, or the guys in the class don't call you out, okay? That is really embarrassing. So if you can be tracked, that means you can prepare ahead for it, okay? Then the third thing is that clutter, okay? Sometimes people freak out when they have clutter alongside their menses okay but that is totally fine as well it only becomes a concern when you feel like the clothes are very heavy and the bleeding is very intense and then maybe the pain associated alongside you probably might need to see your healthcare doctor like a healthcare practitioner okay at that point but if you just see normal luminal clumps it's also fine then another thing mothers need to tell their daughters is that the color it doesn't have to be bright red every time sometimes it could be brown in color and that's also fine so it doesn't signal that you have a disease a disease rather it doesn't signal that something is wrong with you okay you need to we need to impress these things on our daughters okay and we also need to spell this thing out we don't just need to tell them that oh the time that you have this thing when any boy touches you you're going to you know <laughs> that's one big meet okay that all, all not all mothers now but a lot of mothers tell their kids their their daughters they tell them if anybody touches you from now you're going to get pregnant not touch explain this thing to them if you people become intimate if you have intercourse okay if the v goes into the p okay spell this thing out to them so they understand the consequences the implications okay so another thing that mothers need to tell their daughters is that this thing can alter mood. Some people most time when they have it or when it comes around, they have mood swings. Okay, it's something that has to do with your mood. So having mood swings is not for everybody. It doesn't happen to everybody, okay? But it happens and that is okay too. You only need to learn how to modulate your moods during those periods. Okay? Um, another thing that they need to know is that they are going to get it soon like the moment they enter into their team because some people some people said um they didn't know they would ever get it like i don't know what they were thinking of course this is a topic that is usually taught in biology class you know from secondary schools but even at that even though according to some people they say even though it's not a good english okay but even at that some people still freak out the first time they have it so that's something we need to impress upon them then we also need to emphasize that it's not something to be shameful about. There's so many people when they got this thing the first time, they were really hiding it. Like they were, it's, they felt so ashamed. They, they didn't let anybody. They didn't even tell their parents. Some people, especially the ones who grew up with dad, with daddies, okay, they hid, they hid it from their dads because their mom, their mom were not at home or were not available at the time, and they were really ashamed. So it's not something to be ashamed of. Every lady is going to get it. Every lady of childbearing age. In fact, if we don't get it, then something is wrong with you. You need to see your doctor, okay? So it's not something to be ashamed of. So that's it. That's it. And finally, at the time, and they were really ashamed. So it's not something to be ashamed of. Every lady is going to get it. Every lady of childbearing age. In fact, if we don't get it, then something is wrong with you. You need to see your doctor, okay? So it's not something to be ashamed of. So that's it. That's it. And finally, at the time, and they were really ashamed. So it's not something to be ashamed of. Every lady is going to get it every lady of childbearing age people that use tampons you don't have to change your tampons every time that you use the loo okay every time that you use the, the loo the toilet you don't have to change your tampons every time okay so and um in addition to that a uh, hygiene hygiene for um the menstrual menstrual hygiene is very vital very important because we all know that menstrual blood smells not that it, not that it naturally smells, but over time, when microorganisms thrive on them, it gives it that offensive odor. So they need to actually have a meticulous hygiene, especially during the period of the menstruation. With these few points of mine, <laughs> I'm sure that um, you enjoyed this episode. So thank you so much for sticking with me to the very end of this video. I remain peace, Ogurumbi, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>